Hey, what's up guys? It's Brandon here with Balasan Flipping and uh, today I'm going to be giving you guys some great information on um, like I guess I would say safety and the way that you would uh, go about using a Balasan um, in public at an airport and at school because I contacted all of the head supervisors for the TSA, um, a non-emergency, um, what is it called, police office, and uh, a principal at a school, um, just to get this information to you guys to make sure that it was accurate and not just from somewhere on Reddit, you know? So um, the first thing I'm going to be covering is TSA and how to actually um, go about using a balasong at the airport or um how to fly with a balasong if you're trying to um get it to somewhere else so that way you don't really have to you know ship it to somewhere else um and if it's even possible so now i want to start off by saying that if you want to flip a balasong at the airport in the airport um there is exceptions uh obviously you see as the squiddy is plastic um, that goes for the Balio as well. And that could also go with an empty glow mod, so long as it doesn't have any liquid. Um, otherwise, uh, you could still carry on the header of the glow mod without the handles. But anyway, um, that's just if you're trying to fly somewhere. Now, when it comes to uh, shipping or not shipping but like flying with them or just like taking them on can you bring them in your carry-on or do you have to check them and what do you have to do to check them do you have to mention that you have knives on you um and the answer for that is if you are ever flying with let's say you have your whole collection with you and you got a hundred trainers or you have a hundred live blades either one it does not matter you are actually completely allowed in the US and all 50 states um, to fly back and forth between with butterfly knives only, only if they are checked in under the plane. This is, this is all the check-in bags. None of it can be carry on. And now there is requirements for you so that they do not get confiscated. Now, normally people get their knives confiscated when they put it in the check-in, and so there's confusion about, is it allowed? So it is allowed, but the thing is, people need to um, tuck this in properly. You need to have your knives either sheathed, if it comes with a sheath, put it in a sheath. If you have a pelican case or just a case, or basically just find a way, rubber band these down, and then wrap them in paper towel, and then tape them. Anything you can do to cover these as much as possible, almost as if you were trying to hide them. But the thing is, the x-ray machine's going to see them anyway. But all you're doing is making it safer for the TSA agents when they're rummaging through your luggage. If any of these are loose in any manner where they could um, be exposed to them seeing this uh, at all, it will be confiscated. But if it's in there and it's not exposed, they will not take it. They'll leave it in. They don't care what you um, have in there so long as it's not exposed or is going to be hurting them or doesn't show up something dangerous on the x-ray machine. And so that is technically the rules for the TSA at the airport and flying with them. And now the one for uh, schools, because I know this one's very important. Um, so a lot of people get these who are uh, younger and they have their trainers and they go, well, it's just a trainer. I want to go to school with it or this one's plastic or this one's light and it's it's not even noticeable or it, it could even be like a little keychain thing. Oh, how could this cause any problem? So um, I talked with a principal of a local school and um, although they can't speak for every district or state, I just want to mention that if you bring anything that resembles a weapon, even if it's a trainer, they call those a replica. They actually refer to them as replicas. So, but here's the thing. If you bring um, this to school, um, they can legally confiscate it from you uh, until your parents pick it up or they can hold it till the end of the day and give it back to you so long as it's not a dangerous weapon. Um, or in some rare cases, there are even schools that can hold it until the end of the school year. So, uh, and then your parents can pick it up. 
Um, and yeah, and then there's even crazier ones where if you did bring an actual knife, then they hand it over to the police and then it's up to your parents or it's completely confiscated forever. Um, but when it comes to even just like toys and such, if you're not looking to get these taken away, do not bring them to school, all right? In no way was I ever during this video going to tell you to bring the, any of these to school. Um, the answer is pretty much no, you don't want to bring these to school. And I know that a lot of you are going to jump into the comment section right now and go, well, I flipped this at school and I flipped that at school. It doesn't matter what you're flipping at your school. If, if it works for you, that's great. It doesn't mean take a chance, especially if you're not looking to lose your ballast songs. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, they can take it from you for many various reasons, and they have the legal right to. It, and even if you don't turn it up to your teacher, they will get the um, school campus officer to take it from you. Um, so yeah, and now speaking of officers, we're going to go over to the law enforcement side of if you ever deal with the police with balisongs, whether it's trainers or live blades, they're actually both put into the same category when being dealt with in public. So allow me to explain how this works. First of all, if you ever wondered, oh, can you flip this in a, in a grocery store or whatever? Um, the answer is you shouldn't. Um, even I've done this in the past and I, I wasn't actually sure of this, but any place that isn't considered public, um, there's, there's greater, there's greater, uh, what is that called? trying to consequences yeah there's greater consequences for the different places um that you flip so um basically whether you're in private i mean they can take your stuff then or they can like charge you with like disturbing the piece or whatever even if it's a trainer um it could just cause uh concern so if it is cause for concern and you're out in public and someone calls and says hey this guy's flipping around a knife or something because you're like hanging out at a place or and i don't know but anyway, if a if a officer approaches you, all right, if if an officer approaches you, the first thing they're probably going to say from their call is this person has a knife. It doesn't matter if it's a trainer, um, and and this isn't a situation that you should just laugh off when an officer walks up to you, because he's probably going to say put the knife down, and what you want to do in that situation is this: you do not want to throw this. You do not want to talk back, you do not want to question, and you do not want to start explaining yourself just yet. The first thing you want to do is go down slowly and put this on the ground. And then keep your hands shown. Keep both of your hands shown. And then you can start, it. you want to step away as well. But you want to, you want to say, listen, um, that is not a real knife. I flip them. It's what people do on like Instagram and YouTube. It's just a trainer like on Amazon. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. They'll take a look at it. They'll be like, huh? Okay. This, this is a trainer story checks out. All right. Hey, just try to like keep to doing this in your house. I mean, they can't stop you from flipping this out in public, but they could just suggest to like stop flipping it for now, at least in the area you are. But, um, hold on. Let me fix that exposure. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much kind of the golden rule for, uh, when you're dealing, um, with an officer in public, but yeah, I mean, those are pretty much the three great pieces of information that are 100% factual. I got them from actual sources. I called into TSA, a principal from a school, and a non-emergency um, law enforcement line. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I think you may have already noticed, because I usually have my sleeve done all the time, but I have this amazing and beautiful band on me today. And if you guys are interested in picking it up, it really supports my channel because YouTube has been terrible lately. And um, this, uh, all, all the proceeds would definitely be helping me. And um, it's on the website, ballastonflipping.com, which will be in the description. And they're pretty cheap. So uh, it I would just greatly appreciate it, honestly. Plus, it's a nice fashion sense. But anyway, I'll be seeing you guys. Yeet.